Here we're going to be looking at the FIFO inventory method. Now that stands for first in first out, FIFO here. And that's where the first goods purchased or made are the first used here. And for example here we're going to be going through some numbers here showing how we would use this method based on some uh, purchase or some inventory that we have here and some sales that we make. And uh, we're going to have it laid out here where we have a specific date where we have a specific quantity purchased at a specific price here and then we're going to have sales of those inventories here at a specific quantity at a specific price. Now the purchased amount here represents our inventory and then the numbers here in sold represents our sales. But what we're going to be concerned with here is just our cost of goods sold and our ending inventory. So we're not going to be worried about our revenue account here. And we're going to start here with this periodic FIFO method. And we're going to be comparing it to the perpetual FIFO method. But starting with our periodic FIFO method here, uh, we using this periodic FIFO, you determine the cost of the ending inventory and the cost of goods sold by taking the cost of the oldest uh, purchase here and working forward until all the uh, it accounts for all the units here in our inventory so and the sales made against our inventory here so uh, when you're using this periodic method what we're concerned with is not the particular quantity sold at a specific date here but the total quantity sold for the period here so our total quantity here was 950 units sold and the total inventory we have here is 1600 units of what are purchased here for the period. So we are going to have some ending inventory based on that here. So let's go up and do our calculations here. So first off for the taking care of this 950 units sold here. So 300 of them definitely are the oldest inventory here. 300 at $20 a piece here. Uh, that gives us $6,000 for our cost of goods sold. Now the next amount is going to come out of this next oldest quantity here of 800 units that we purchased but we're we've got only 650 more to account for so we had the 950 total amount here less the 300 uh, units that we used up here in the oldest inventory inventory so that leaves 650 units to account for and that's all coming out of the 800 units that are available here so 650 at 22 dollars a piece gives us fourteen thousand three hundred dollars for our cost of goods sold there so the total uh, 950 units uh, sold here are uh, the cost of goods sold is going to be twenty thousand three hundred dollars now the next thing we're going to uh, and then for our ending inventory again using this periodic FIFO uh, just going through our numbers here well the total uh, we used up the total 300 amount here at $20, so we have nothing sitting on our inventory, ending inventory here uh, for the first group of 300 here. But for the 800, we used 650, so we have uh, the difference here, 150 remaining here at $22 a piece. That gives us $3,300 here. And then the total amount here, we had 500 sitting or purchased here in our inventory. We didn't use any of those here. So that total amount here of 500 sitting in our ending inventory at $26 a piece, that's $13,000 here. The total amount here of our ending inventory is $16,300. Now let's go down and look at our perpetual FIFO method here. Now this is where we attach the cost of each withdrawal here uh, to the inventory amount that we're using here. So in this case we're going to have to look at each of the uh, with uh, in this case the each sale here 200 to 500 and the 250 the total is 950 units here sold but we have to account for our our cost here based on each of the withdrawals or the sales that are made here. So for this using the same example that we had above here. So for our cost of goods sold. Well we sold uh, uh, 200 units here and they're now coming out of this oldest inventory again here of 300 uh, at $20 a piece. So 200 at $20 gives us $4,000. Now we have to look at this next uh, quantity here of 500 that we sold. So what's how we take how we handle that here is where we had 300 per originally in that oldest quantity here of 300 but we used 200 of them so we have 100 remaining so of this 500 100 can come can come out of this original um, the oldest amount here of 300 at $20 a piece here for $2000 and then the remaining amount comes out of the next oldest quantity here of $800 so 400 of those the 400 remaining here of the 
500 that we sold comes out of the, the 800 quantity here at $22 a piece. So that's $8,800. Now we have to account for the next 250 here. So, well, we can eat. In this case, we still have some remaining here in this 800 quantity, the these next oldest quantity here of 800. Uh, just by looking at it here, we have the 800. Uh, we have had those 800 uh, units sitting here. We used 400 out of there, so we got 400 remaining. And we're only uh, selling 250 of those 400. So 250 was going to come out of this um, next oldest quantity here of 800. So 250 times $22 per unit gives us $5,500. So we've accounted for our total sales here of 950 by doing our summation summing here. So the total uh, per uh, cost of goods sold is $20,300. Now looking at our ending inventory, uh, we used the total uh, oldest amount here of 300 units here at $20 a piece. So there's none sitting here in our ending inventory for that original 300 uh, units. But then the next 800 units, again, we used 650 of those here. So there's 150 remaining here at $20 a piece. That's $3,300. And then, of course, the 500 units uh, that we originally have purchased or we have purchased here the newest quantity. Well, we didn't use any of those here, our newest inventory. So those total amount here is sitting at $26 a piece, and that equals $13,000. So the total amount here of our ending inventory is $16,300. Now, let's look at uh, the situation here where in all cases where FIFO is used, the inventory and the cost of goods sold would be the same at the end of the period, whether using the perpetual in, uh, or perpetual method here or the periodic method for accounting for our inventory. So we can go back here and look at it for periodic. Periodic FIFO, we had 20,300 here for our cost of goods sold, and the periodic FIFO for ending inventory was $16,300 here. So, and that matches up if we go down here and look at our perpetual FIFO. FIFO here, where we had cost of goods sold again at $20,300, same as for the periodic FIFO. And then for the perpetual FIFO ending inventory, we have $16,300, the same as the periodic FIFO. All right, so that takes care of our FIFO inventory accounting here using both the periodic and the perpetual methods. Now let's look at the LIFO inventory method. Now LIFO stands for last in first out. That's where the last goods purchased or made are used first here. So we're going to first look at our periodic LIFO here and we're going to be using the same example we've done used in the past here. So we determine the cost of the ending inventory and the cost of goods sold by taking the most recent purchases and working backwards until we account for all the units in inventory here. So what we start with here is the 950 units we've sold and they're going to be signed, uh, signed off or accounted for through the most recent purchases here of 500 units and the next most recent purchases here of 800 units. So first for the 250 uh, units that we sold here, those would be going against the most recent purchases here of 500 units and at $26 a piece. And then we have after charging off the 250 here, we still have 250 sitting in our b inventory account here. So those would be going against, and those would be going against here the 500 units sold here. So we've used up this total amount here purchased of of 500 through the. Uh, 250 units sold here and 250 units of the 500 units sold here. So let's go up and look at our cost of goods sold here. So uh, first we've accounted for those first uh, most recent purchases here of 500 units at $26 per unit. So th that equals $13,000 here. Now the next here we have the remaining amount here, we just take the 950 total units sold less the 500 uh, units here that we charged off against that here, and that gives us the remaining amount here of 450 units. Now the 450 units are coming out of this most recent purchase here of 800 uh, units here. So those at $22 per unit. So 450 at $22 per unit gives us $9,000. So now we've accounted for the total 950 units here. So summing those up, we that our total cost of goods sold would be $22,000. Now looking at our 
ending inventory here again with this periodic LIFO. Well, for the oldest units here of 300, we didn't use any of those, so we had at $20 a piece. So here we'd have $6,000 uh, sitting in our ending inventory. Now for the 800 units here that we purchased, we use 450 of those. So at $22 a piece here, the remaining amount would equal $7,700. And then for the most recent purchases here of 500, we used all of those up here at $26 per unit, and we would have zero zero sitting here in our ending inventory. So total ending inventory we have here at $13,700. Now let's look at our perpetual LIFO method here. Now that's where we attach the cost to each withdrawal here. So we have to account for these total 950 units that we've sold here. So first we would take the 250 units that we sold here. The most recent purchases would go against those 500 units purchased here. So in this case we would have at $26 a piece. So our cost of goods sold would be 250 at $26 for $6,500 here. And then for the 500 units sold here, we would, uh, they would be coming out of the most recent purchases here of 800 uh, units at $22 a piece here. So 500 at $22 a piece gives us $11,500 here. And then for this, uh, the units sold here of 200, those will be coming out of the most recent purchases here of 300. So at $20 a piece. So here we have 200 units at $20 a piece. That equals $4,000. So summing up, uh, summing our totals here, our total cost of goods sold on those 950 units would be $21,500 hundred dollars here. Now to look at our ending inventory with our perpetual LIFO method here. So with the uh, oldest uh, inventory here of 300 uh, units, we sold 200 of those here. So the remaining balance would be in our ending inventory here at $20 a piece for $2,000. And then for those 800 uh, units that were sitting here in our inventory, we use 500 of those here. So the remaining balance at $22 a piece would be sitting in our ending inventory at $6,600 here. And then for those 500 units here, we sold our we. Uh, we, we assigned 250 of the 500 units sitting in inventory. We assigned 250 of those to the sales here. So the remaining balance would be sitting at $26 per unit here for $6,500. So the total ending inventory, I will just sum these amount, and the total ending inventory would be $15,100. So that takes care of our perpetual, uh, periodic and perpetual LIFO using the LIFO inventory method.